grammar. So page 145 is where we're going to start today. Page 145. And maybe you noticed we're kind of getting close to the back of this book. Woohoo! We have, um, I think I told JC as you were coming in, Kaden, we have about seven weeks left. And then it's going to be summer break. So we'll finish this book before seven weeks. And once we finish grammar, we're done with grammar. We're just going to keep focusing on the writing part of class. So um, page 145, we're reviewing again. And it starts out talking about prepositions. You guys are good with those. You've been marking prepositional phrases inside this book for a while. So this is review about that. So it says... A preposition starts a phrase that shows the relationship between a noun or pronoun and another word in the sentence. Here's your example. The soldier fell into the moat. By the way, do you guys know what a moat is? Okay, Caden, uh, what's a moat? It's kind of like um, a river, but also um, like... In the medieval days, kind of, they would surround their castle so nobody would get in with the moat. Yes. Good. I like how you explain that. And sometimes uh, in medieval days, they would put like crocodiles in the moat, huh? Like, that's what I remember, like man-eating fish and stuff in there <laughs> to kind of make it so that they wouldn't try to swim across the moat because you wouldn't want to go inside that water if there's dangerous creatures in there. So, but you're right. It was a, it was something they used to protect the castle to keep people from coming in that they didn't want coming in. So you've probably heard about that before, right, JC? Oh, you haven't. Okay. So I think in, um, I want to say the Disney movie Sword in the Stone, I think had a castle with a moat around it. I'll have to go back and look at that. But I heard another student say that and I was like, yeah, I kind of remember that. But anyway, uh, you don't want to fall into that. And this poor soldier fell into that. So anyway, into the moat. So into shows the relationship between the soldier and the moat. It shows where the soldier fell. So that is the prepositional phrase there in that sentence is into the moat. And then here's another example. The soldier jumped over the moat. So over shows the relationship between the soldier and the moat. And it shows where the soldier jumped. So over the moat is the prepositional phrase. That first word over is a preposition. And same up here, that word into is a preposition. So that's always a signal that it, that's the beginning of the prepositional phrase. And then it says here, write a sentence with a prepositional phrase that shows the relationship between princess and bridge. So this is where you can think of your own sentence. Can you guys think of a sentence using princess and bridge and try to think of a prepositional phrase to put in there between princess and bridge? Oh, before you do that, Let's let's go back and refresh our memory of all the prepositions. So do you guys remember way back when we made this tab right here, the post-it note? Go back to that page where we put that post-it. It's on page 43, way back. And at the bottom of that page, you'll see the prepositions. Page 43, just kind of flip back to that page. So here they are. Um, in alphabetical order for you, some of the more popular ones are like for or from, into, of, in, with, until. All of these words here are prepositions. So when you're looking for a prepositional phrase, you're looking for one of these words that starts the phrase. So using one of these words how can you come up with a sentence about the princess and the bridge? Can you think of a way to put a phrase in there using one of these words? And you'll need extra words too, but Caden, do you have an idea? The princess walked on the bridge. Yes, good. And on is here. 
on this list on comma on to either one of those so good the princess walked on the bridge can you think of one jc the princess and then use one of these words or a phrase you'll need a verb too so walked is one um is there another the way princess. to say it? oh go ahead um the princess jumped over the bridge there you go the princess jumped over the bridge or you could say the princess walked on that's what Caden said but over the bridge that works too um there's beneath we could say the princess walked beneath the bridge or she went beneath the bridge um the princess ran because of the dogs, because of the dogs across the bridge. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to think of one. <laughs> oh, across is on here though. That would be a good one. The princess walked across the bridge. That's a good one. All right, so you, you write your sentence, whatever you picked here. I think I'll use across. But you can put it, you can either copy mine or put your own. The princess walked across the bridge. Princess walked across the bridge. So across for this one that I wrote is the preposition. So the prepositional phrase would be across the bridge. That's the phrase. Um, down here it says, what is the prepositional phrase pattern? So there is a pattern and it goes like this. You're gonna put that word preposition, which is those words we did, we looked at on page 43, plus noun, plus noun, and then underneath that no verb. So that is important to remember that the prepositional phrase is a preposition plus a noun, but there is no verb in the phrase. There it is. There's no verb in the phrase, so it's just preposition plus noun. If it has a verb, it could be a clause. Remember, clauses have verbs, but phrases do not. And then here, list five prepositions. So. You can either look back on page 43 and pick five, or if you remember five, tell me some, some words we can list here that are prepositions. Do you guys remember some of them? Go ahead, JC. On. Good. Across. Good. Until. Until, that's a good one. Mm, into. Into, good one. In. And in, nice, those are good. So you can copy those down, Caden, or if you know there's a bigger list, so whichever ones you wanna write down. Good job, JC. Okay, and down here it says, think about it. Many words can be used as different parts of speech. However, a word can perform only one part of speech at a time. For example, since can be a preposition. So it's in that list we just looked at, the word since, that begins a prepositional phrase. And since can be a www word that begins an adverb clause. So remember that www.asia word, the S in Asia stands for since. So the word since is on two different lists. So it can be used as a preposition, a prepositional phrase, or an adverb clause. And remember the difference between the phrase, the phrase does not have a verb, no verb, but a clause does. So look down here at these examples. It says the prepositional phrase 
The princess has been sick since yesterday. So that word since is a preposition and yesterday is a noun. So this is a prepositional phrase, since yesterday. There's no verb in there. But look down here at the adverb clause. It says the princess has been sick since she ate the apples. Now we have a verb here, that verb ate. So that changes it. It's not going to be a prepositional phrase anymore. Now it is a clause. It's an adverb clause. Since she ate the apples. So since she ate the apples is an adverb clause. And here's the pattern at the very, very bottom. The WWW word, that's the Asia word, since plus subject she plus verb eight. So look back up here on the prep pattern preposition is prep. I mean, this pattern is preposition since plus noun yesterday and no verb. So that's the difference. So whenever you see one of these words, make sure you pay attention to how it's used. And then that'll tell you if it's a clause or a phrase. Okay, you guys look at the words around it and then that'll help you decide. Any questions about this page right here? Okay, so let's move on. And then JC, when you're ready, could you read this sentence, please? It's page 147. It grew and grew to the floor, out the window, and over the lush lawn. Okay, good. What are we talking about here? Do you guys remember the story so far? What's growing? It was in your homework this last week on one of those pages before. Go ahead. Her nose. Uh, her nose. Is that what you were going to say too, Kaden? Yeah. Her nose is growing. <laughs> to the floor, out the window, and over the lush lush lawn. So, I mean, okay, that's kind of gross, number one. <laughs> and then number two... She's probably not able to move anywhere because her nose is so long. Does it remind you of another story you know about somebody's nose that grows? Have you ever heard of another story about that? JC, what story is that? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. And JC, why did his nose grow? Do you remember why? Because when he would fly, it would grow. Yep. Whenever he lied, it would grow. It was like obvious that he was lying because his nose kept getting longer. But Caden, do you know why the princess's nose is growing? Why is her nose growing? Because she ate the apples. She ate the apples. So there's some kind of a weird um, reaction to eating these apples. So good. Lush means really green and healthy and full. So think of a one of those uh, yards, like your backyard that has a lot of really nice grass back there. And it makes you wanna take off your shoes and run around barefoot on the grass cause it's soft. And so lush just means really nice grass. Okay, healthy grass. So we'll put a check there. It is an adjective cause it's telling about the lawn which is a noun here. Okay, there are three articles. Go ahead and find those by yourself and label those. And then when you're ready, Kaden, help us find the nouns here. Um, floor. Good. Window. Yep. And lawn. Good. Yep. There's a pronoun, JC, do you know where the pronoun is? It. Good. And it's talking about her nose. So it is the pronoun. And then one adjective, Kaden. Uh, lush. Good. Excellent. Two coordinating conjunctions, JC. And. Okay. And another and. And another and. Good. CC. Good job. Um, we'll skip prepositional phrases just for a second. So, Kaden, how about the verbs? Grew. Grew. Good. 
good. And grew. And grew. <laughs> There's a lot of words repeating in this one. Um, and then Caden, what about the subject? What grew and grew? It. Good, yes. It, which is her nose. Now the there's three prepositional phrases in here. JC, can you tell us where they are? Um, to the floor. To the floor. Out the window. Yep, out the window. And then over the lush lawn. Good, and over the lush lawn, very good. Those are the three prepositional phrases. We have to, out, and over. Those are all prepositions. Good job. And no verbs are in there. Um, and then the capital, Caden, where does that go? Uh, the I in it. Good. And then JC, what about the end mark? A period. A period. Nice. Excellent. That was quick. So your homework then, as you already know, are the next three pages. So you'll work on that this week. And now we're going to put this away and get out your binders next. You guys had a chance to write a creative story this week, again, about the overdressed children or a made up story of your choice. So does anybody feel like sharing their story today? Because I'm so curious. I have not had a chance to read them on, on Google Classroom yet. So I haven't checked them, but do you guys feel like reading your story? Kaden, do you feel like reading yours? I haven't finished it yet, but um, because I was really busy, but yep. um, after this class, I was going to finish it. Okay, that's okay. How about you, JC? Do you feel like reading yours? No, not really. Not really? Okay, <laughs> you don't have to. Did you guys like, uh, I know you're not finished yet, Kaden, but did you like making up a story or was it kind of hard to do that? What do you guys think? What about you, JC? Did you like writing your own like creative story or was it kind of hard? I just um, did the overdressed children one because I couldn't really think of anything. Okay, that's okay. So, um, but was it hard to come up with ideas or once you got started writing, was it pretty easy? What do you think, JC? It was kind of easy. Some parts I was kind of like, what could I put here? But other than that, it was, it was fine. It was okay. Good. And did the question words help you like come up with a plot? If you ask questions about the pictures and stuff, good. Okay. So Kaden, don't forget to use your questions to figure out your plot like who, what, when, where, how, all of that. So um, there's a couple of things. We're gonna organize our binder next, okay? So um, the first thing I want you to do is, is that pink page that you have in the front pocket here, this one. Don't put this away yet. I, I really wanna suggest that you, this is, this is what I think you should do. If you have a spot that you always do your homework at home, and it's at a table or at a desk or something, see if your parents are okay with you taping this on the wall next to where you work. If they don't want you to do that, you can keep it in your binder, okay? So check with them and you're like, mom, is it okay if I tape this up on the wall so it can help me with my writing? This is a great list. Look at all these LY adverbs. It's great because if you get stuck on one, you need one for your dress up right here. So if they let you tape it up, great. If not, that's okay. Just keep it in your front pocket. Don't put this one away yet, okay? And then from there, we're gonna start by putting this one away. This is your yellow page here. That one's gonna go behind the tab that says model charts and outlines. So find that tab in your binder right here, model charts and outlines, and go ahead and put it at the back of these pages here. Just stick it in there. That's the yellow page, 115. Okay, don't forget to close up your rings when you're done putting that in there. And then your finished comp compositions, you're gonna put the rest of the overdressed children 
Go ahead and put it behind finished compositions. And then don't forget to close up your rings. And then you probably guessed it, we're getting out the next lesson, the next week. So go back to the front here under source text tab. After you close your, bind your rings, don't forget to close your rings. Source text, um, you should see here at the very front, Week, five, week 15, Book and Dinosaurs. So go ahead and get this one out. There's three pages. It's gonna be another creative writing. This one's gonna be fun. So we have one, two, three pages. You're gonna leave week 16 inside here. Go ahead and close your rings. You don't need a lined paper this morning, so just these three pages. And give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Good, thank you, Kaden. Okay, thank you, JC. All right, this one's called Book and Dinosaurs. So go ahead and let's just go right into the pictures here. Probably saw those when you were getting them out. Um, like I said, this is another creative writing opportunity. And maybe right away you might've noticed this box at the bottom here has an X over it. That is on purpose. And that's because they want you to come up with the ending. So we've got a beginning and a middle here, and then the ending is, is an X. So you have to think of it inside your head, how this story is going to end. It is gonna still be a three paragraph story. So everything you talk about in the first paragraph is gonna go with this picture. Everything in the second paragraph is gonna go with this picture. And then everything in the third paragraph is gonna be what's in your head about what you think will happen next. Now you have a choice. You can you can draw it in there if you want or just use your own head to come up with an idea. But before we get too deep into the story, go ahead, Kaden, I see your hand there. I already know what I'm gonna do for the ending. Awesome, okay, before you tell me, don't forget, cause I'm gonna ask you in a minute. I want you to turn this page to, over to the back side. This is the keyword outline page with the pictures. Just turn it over to the blank white part of the back. And we're gonna take some notes back here to help you remember what to do when you sit down to come up with a story. The first step is to think. And remember a couple of weeks ago when I asked you the hard question, I was like, how do you think? And most of you were like, or most of my students said, well, you just do, it just happens, right? Because when you think it's automatic. But do you remember what we do like when we want to think, you remember the process of thinking, we have to ask ourselves questions, right? Remember the example when I said, maybe your stomach's starting to growl like mine because I'm getting hungry for lunch, right? And you might start asking yourself, what am I going to eat for lunch? And when is this class going to be over? And, um, where is the pizza, the leftover pizza that we had last night? You know, and you start thinking of these questions as your stomach is starting to growl. You're like, mm, I'm, I'm ready to eat something. So asking questions is how you think. It's how you access information that's already in your brain. So let's write those big six question words down. It's gonna be who, and I'm just putting it right in the middle of my page here, making a list what, when, where, 
why and how and i'm just going to put a giant question mark there so those are the big six who what when where why how what am i going to eat for lunch where is the pizza that we had last night when is this class going to be over how am i going to warm up my pizza are you going to put it in the toaster oven are you going to put it in the microwave are you just going to eat it cold <laughs> you know those things are happening inside your brain without you even realizing it. It's, it's just natural for you to ask those things, but this is a great way to access information that's already in there about a story. So you can come up with who are the characters, you can come up with names and why are they doing what they're doing and all of those questions. Kaden, did you have something to say? Yeah, I'm gonna have to actually go because um. I'm going to go to an appointment and then I'm going to go eat, but. Oh, okay. Um, I'm recording it. So you'll want to watch the rest of it later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kaden, I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. So draw a line here under how, because we have other questions that we want to ask to get us going on some ideas. So other questions could be like, before, like what's happening before or after or outside of the picture frame or invisible. These are also good things to help us come up with a good plot. So go ahead and write those next. And I like to do the big question marks. They're kind of fun next to it. So we have another set of questions that you can ask. And then the last questions are going to be like, think, say, do, and we're going to add this one, feel. Think, say, do, feel. So that's going to also help you describe what's happening with the characters in the story. What are they thinking? What are they saying? What are they doing? And how are they feeling? So these are all going to help you come up with a plot. Um, so you're the last one left, JC. <laughs> so it's going to be you and me writing this story for today, but that'll be good. We'll, we'll brainstorm together. But um, so let's turn this back over to the front side. And do you remember what we're looking for when we see that central fact. Do you remember what that means, the central fact? Like what's like happening in the story? Or in the picture, yeah. So like what's literally in the picture, good. That's what, that's what we're looking for for central fact. So what do you literally see in that picture, first one? It looks like a little boy reading like a book. Yeah. And what do you think the book is about? Dinosaurs. Yep, because you can see the word dinosaurs right here. So we might as well start off with one of the questions is who, who is this character? So do you have a name that you want to name this boy? Boy name? Be anything. Mm -hmm. Tom. <laughs> Tom, okay, <laughs> I like it, simple. So we can put for a central fact, you can put Tom, book, dinosaur, or dinosaurs, S, dinosaurs. So he's reading a book about dinosaurs. So that central fact is pretty easy. That's the part where you're just gonna say literally what's happening in the picture. You named him Tom and he's looking at a book about dinosaurs. Now, this is when you start asking these question words on the back. So another good one would be like, um, where is Tom in this picture? Where do you think he is? And you could probably just stay unmuted because since it's just you, JC, you can just, it's easier to just leave it unmuted. Um, he's probably at like the library. Okay. He's at the library. Is he... Um, Another good question is who, like, who is he with or is he by himself? I'd say he's probably like with his mom. Okay. So you can put library, mom, 
we only have two words there, but that's okay. We're just, this is basically for you to put your notes down so that when you go and sit down to write this story, you have something to look at and jar your memory with ideas. But I do want to tell you, JC, that you don't have to use this keyword outline. If it's easier for you to just sit down and write the story, that's okay with me. But for today in class, we'll we'll put some notes down. Um, all right, another good question then would be why, that's on here, why is he reading a book about dinosaurs? Any ideas on that? Probably just because he was bored. Okay, he was bored. Uh, a couple of other ideas could be that maybe he's supposed to do a report on dinosaurs for school. Um, or maybe he just likes dinosaurs. Maybe he just saw the movie Jurassic Park <laughs> or a movie that has dinosaurs in it and he wants to learn more. Any of those are good reasons for him to be reading the book. So we could say that he's bored and maybe he uh, likes, you don't have to copy this. You can do your own if you have other ideas, but likes dinosaurs. Ha okay, another good question word back here would be like feel or think maybe. What is he feeling or thinking as he's looking at these dinosaurs do you have any ideas he looks very happy and he's probably thinking like dinosaurs are so cool yeah I agree with that he does look happy he's got a kind of smile kind of a closed mouth smile um so I would say I like that happy I'm just gonna put dinos <laughs> for short and then cool happy dinos cool and maybe he's looking at a specific one. Um, we can't really see the page here, but if we peek ahead, we can see these dinosaurs. I think this one's a T-Rex. We know that one, that one's obvious. And do you know what this one's called over here? I think that's a Stegosaurus. Okay. Or maybe, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. One of my other students said a Triceratops, I think. Triceratops, oh yeah, maybe. Maybe or a, a pterodactyl or something. I don't, I think this one might be a pterodactyl right here. I don't no, know. That's a different dinosaur, but I don't know which one that one is. Okay. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know my dinosaurs, but I do know this one's probably the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the T-Rex. Um, and okay. We're going to talk about that picture in a second, but we have a couple more spots here. So um what else could we say about this first picture? Oh, um, is there anything you can think of that is maybe invisible that we can't see in this picture? I know he's at the library, but do you think there's a lot of people in the library? Is it crowded or is it quiet in there and there's nobody there? What do you think? I think there's probably like a bookshelf behind him or something where he got the book from. Ah, okay. So maybe there's a bookshelf behind him with other dinosaur books. Maybe he's just sitting in that area with all the all the dinosaur books, you think? Yeah, maybe. We can put that down. But like I said, when you go to write your paragraphs here, you can you can change it up. Uh, we could just put bookshelf behind Tom. Maybe he's wondering something. Maybe he's wondering what it would be like to live during the time that dinosaurs lived. Um, you know, there, there might be something that happens between these two pictures that we could add here. Like, what do you think might happen between him looking at the book and then obviously that one gets a little crazy. What do you think happened in between? Um, it looked like to me, like he like got like transported like into the book or like shrunk and then like started like walking on the book, I guess. 
Oh yeah. Maybe he shrunk. That's kind of cool. And maybe he got sucked into the book. I like that idea. That's a good one. Another idea that one of my students had was that he fell asleep right here. He was tired. And then he started dreaming about this. That's another idea. I like, I like your idea. You can, so he shrunk and in, he got sucked into book. But like I said, if you get inspired later by something different, you don't have to follow this exactly, okay? It's like that movie. Did you ever see that one, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? <laughs> That's an old movie. I think I've seen some of it, but I don't think yeah. I've seen all of it. They They come up with, I think it's the dad that comes up with a machine that He's like a scientist, I think. And then uh, anyway, everybody shrunk really, really small. And then they were trying to figure out how to get back to normal, <laughs> like the rest of the movie. Okay, so now back to, this is Roman numeral two. So this is going to be your second paragraph. Um, and we have central fact again here. So looking at the picture, literally, what do you see in this picture? It looks like he's going to get like attacked by dinosaurs or something. Yes, like they came alive, right? All of a sudden they're coming out or I guess he went into the book, but, and he might be getting attacked. Yeah. So let's put Tom. Um, let's see, how could, what other keywords could we put here? Maybe attacked, you said attacked. And then I'll put alive because the dinosaurs became alive. And you can rearrange these words or whatever, whatever you need to do. So, okay, let's go with what you thought of. He now is inside the book. So clearly there's probably more going on in the background. So that is one of our questions on the back is like invisible. What else do you think could be back here with him? It's probably like um, his mom in the background. She's like, oh my gosh, like what? How did he do that? How is he in the book? Are you getting attacked by dinosaurs? <laughs> is the mom in the book, like, did she get sucked in too? Or is she looking from the outside? She's just looking from the outside. Oh, okay. I like that. So maybe mom. Oops. Um, looking in, maybe looking in at Tom or however you want to put that. And then you said like, oh my gosh, maybe she's worried. How happened? Um, do we want to, do you want to name those dinosaurs or you just want to keep them like generic dinosaurs? I think I'll just call them dinosaurs. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Okay. So now she's looking in, that's interesting. She's looking into the book, but she sees now Tom is in there running away from these dinosaurs. Um, let's see. What are some other question words here? Do you have an idea of what could happen next? Like what happens after that? He looks scared and like trying to run away from them maybe. Yeah, well, we know that they're trying to attack him or they're, they attacked him. And so maybe he's running away. That's scary. And where is he gonna go? That's a good question word, where? Where is he gonna go? Maybe he's gonna like run away from the book. Run away from the book? Is that what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's in the book though, right? Like he's trying oh, to yeah. play back um, out? Is that what you're thinking? Hmm. Where could he run away to? Could he like run up, climb up a tree? Or is he trying to find like 
a portal to get out of the book again, <laughs> some kind of magic passageway to get out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or that could be something you save down here, how he escapes. Maybe he's hiding somewhere. Yeah, maybe he could be like hiding, trying to hide. Yeah, where would be a good place for him to hide? Maybe like a bush or something. Okay. We'll put bush here. We'll say he, he found a bush. He's running away and he found a bush to hide. Maybe he's crouched down behind it. What do you think happens next? <laughs> Is he going to be okay? <laughs> the dinosaurs can't find him. Oh, good. Okay. So... So we got, he got, he's safe. So the dinosaurs can't find him. So they just walk back. Okay. So dinos can't find. And maybe they walk. Where do they walk back to? maybe like back to like their caves like their homes okay homes that's good so there's a little there's a little break in the action so he's like running for his life and mom's going oh poor tom how do i get tom back and then he runs away and finds a bush he, he hides in the bush and so he's safe and then they leave um, and they go back to their homes. Now, this is where you're going to really have to stretch your brain because you're going to have to come up with your whole, how are you going to end this story? So let's think about how is he going to get back home to Tom's home out of the book? Like you said, maybe he found like a portal somewhere that he jumped into. And then became normal again. Okay. Well, the central fact is tricky here because there is no picture. So what what could be um, the next step after they walk back to their homes? He's he's crouched down behind the bush. So maybe he uh, stands up and he looks around. Maybe he's trying to figure out what to do next. Something like that. Okay. Um. Maybe stand and then think next. Like, what is he going to do next? And by the way, you can add extra sentences in here. Like, you can even have a speaking part. Um, think is a band word. So when you go to write the paragraph, try to stay away from think. You'll have to think of something else, like wondered. Like, he wondered what he was going to do next. Um, and then he's got to search for a portal. I like that idea about the port portal. So maybe he begins uh, searching portal. Is it A-L or O-L? Let's forget how to spell that one. I think it's A-L. Is it A-L? Okay. Let's just double check here. Yes, you're right. P-O-R-T-A-L. He starts searching for a portal. So we probably need to have a little bit of adventure in here. Maybe um is his mom calling out to him? Maybe do you think she do you think he can hear his mom, or is it just that she can only see into the book? Um he can probably hear her. Okay. So she's like yelling at her, follow my voice. <laughs> Come back home. Maybe she's like trying to like lead him to the portal to help him get out. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Mom, lead. And then I'll do an arrow portal. And she's, you can fill in the blanks there with um, how she's yelling and telling him where to turn. Like after the next tree, turn left. 
keep going. And then you'll see a big rock and behind the rock or something like that. You know, she could be telling him instructions on how to get out. So um, maybe here then, are they in maybe, where are they in a forest or like a jungle probably or something like that maybe? Dinosaurs? Um, I like to imagine the dinosaurs are in a jungle somewhere. In a jungle, yeah. Or I guess you could be kind of like, you could really kind of get think outside the box and then maybe they're in the city, in a different city or like at on a different planet. I don't know if you like to go that crazy with your thinking or if you like to keep it more realistic, we could say jungle, but you could really pick anywhere where they are. You want to stick with jungle? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So maybe we'll put jungle and then um, like I'll just put around trees. That's where he, that's where the mom is telling him to go, like go around here and go through this and you can put whatever you want there. And then does anything happen in the meantime? Are there other dinosaurs there? Or other? Yeah, maybe, creatures? maybe there's like velociraptors. I think mm. that's what they're called. Yeah. They like might be chasing him. Yes. Velociraptors. I think it's a C O. Wait, hold on. Let me look. <laughs> Velociraptors. Yes, it's a C I. V E L O C I R A P T O R S. Chasing Tom. And then I guess we have one more spot where we could say he actually found the portal. Is this going to have a happy ending so he gets back home with his mom? Yeah, I like happy endings too. Found portal. And I'm going to put a W with a slash. That means like with mom and a heart. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. It's a happy ending. And like I said, you can fill in, you know, all the extra stuff, like if there's speaking parts or if, you know, he comes across something else or maybe he gets hungry on his journey and he finds an interesting looking fruit that he decides to eat and it gives him energy. I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to think, help you think of endless really endless ideas so don't forget when you do write this pair these paragraphs go back to this page to help you if you get stuck on what to write about this on here these notes will help you come up with a plot okay um <clears throat> so let's check the checklist really quick because we have something new on here now we actually have six dress ups now. So look at your, this is page 129. We have six now, but don't worry, that's the maximum. We're not going to have any more than six. So um, we have the usual LY, who, which, strong verb, because clause, quality adjective. And the new one is www.asia clause. Now notice it does not have a dot B. When we do our grammar book, it does have a dot B. And do you remember what the B stands for? Because? Yes. And so the reason why it's not here is because you already have a because clause here. So you're not going to use because for this one. But let's put a note at the bottom of this page and write down what the Asia words are. So go ahead at the very bottom where it's blank down here. Just put www. Asia. And then do you remember what the W stand for? Um, when, what, and where? You're close. When and while and um, where. 
You were super close though. When, while, where. So go ahead and just underline the W's there. When, while, where. And then do you remember the Asia, what those stand for? As, since, if, and, hmm. as. You already said as. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um. It's actually although. Oh. As, since, if, although. You were close though. Good job, JC. That was more than pretty much all of my other students could remember. <laughs> so you're doing good. So when, while, where, as, since, if, although. I just underlined the first letter in those words so you could see that it spells Asia. When, while, where, as, since, if, although. And the other thing I just want you to do is draw an arrow up here to remind you that when you get to that part of your checklist, make sure you use one of these words in your sentence. It does not have to be the first word, okay? It can be anywhere in the sentence, but you do have one more word to underline. So this is added now to your list. You're gonna have six to underline in each paragraph, okay? Um, do you have any questions about the Asia words or anything? No. Okay. So the same is up here. You're gonna have your topic clinchers are still here. It does say clincher sentences repeat or reflect two to three key words of central fact. That's the same thing as the topic though. So, you know, the topic clincher, it's the same thing. You're still gonna highlight or bold those words. And then you will give your story a title when you're done with it. And there is the title rule here. It has to repeat one to three key words from your final sentence. Everything else is pretty much the same. You still have your band words here. So if you have your characters speaking, um, like the mom and, the, and Tom, don't use say or said, you already know that. Try to use something different, like yelled or shouted or exclaimed or something like that. And then of course we have good and bad. So try not to use those words too. Okay. Um, any questions about the checklist? No. Okay. I'm gonna show you one more thing uh, before you go. I have a sample page to show you from the website that this curriculum is on. It's kind of cool. Um, this is not one of my students, but it is an example. And by the way, it's not perfect because there are some mistakes on this example, but I wanted to show it to you just so maybe you can see somebody else and how they came up with their ideas. <clears throat> the first paragraph is my favorite because it really does, it really does have all of the elements of the checklist in it. Uh, this person's name is Jack. And uh, the only thing I didn't really like about the first paragraph is it's kind of short. So he needs to have more here. So like I said, this is not a perfect paper, but I wanted you to see what it looked like here. So Jack was reading a fascinating book about dinosaurs. Jack was at the library, which was where he was planning to check out more books. He was there because he had a PE class. It was nearly time for class and Jack was almost done with his book. So maybe it was PE class and he didn't have to go yet. So he went to the library really quick. It sounds like it's a school library. But I wanted you to see that he has all six of the dress ups and here that word where is one of the Asia words. So that's the www.asia word. And You've got your topic clinchers. He has Jack and book and Jack and book here. Okay, I'll just read the next paragraph just so you can see what his story was about. But in the second paragraph, he forgot a WWW word. So make sure you include that in each paragraph when you do your writing. It says, as Jack was on the page, the last page of his book, the lifelike volcano erupted and the dinosaurs emerged from the book. Jack yelled, yikes, because of the furiously frightening scene before him. There were Tyrannosaurus rex, Triceratops, and more. The Tyrannosaurus rex turned around and spotted Jack, whose skin went white. 
Jack wished he had not read that book. <laughs> a lot of times they say your skin goes white when you're scared. It's like all the blood goes out of your system and you turn white. <laughs> so that's what he meant by that. But here he accidentally put because of. And a because clause, you can't use of next to it because then that changes it to a, a prepositional phrase. So I just want to tell you that he, he accidentally did that. So try not to use of next to because when you do yours. The dinosaurs were rampaging through the library. That's a good word, rampaging. The librarian had fainted and people were screaming in terror. Jack, who ran as fast as his wobbling legs would carry him, was no match for the speed of the Tyr Tyrannosaurus Rex. Suddenly, all the dinosaurs were sucked back into the book. Because of this, people stopped screaming and the librarian woke up. Jack left for class, glad there were no dinosaurs in the library. <laughs> Almost kind of like yours with it getting sucked into the book. They got sucked back in the book, but yours is, I like how you had yours with the boy getting sucked into the book. So, okie doke, that was it. I just wanted to show you that example and I'm excited to see what you come up with. And do you have any questions about the homework or anything? Nope. So we're done for today. Good job, JC. I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. bye. Have a good week.